Those extraordinary words were from a manuscript called The Bedura Effect by Erin George. Erin, would you like to come up, please? <laughs> you have friends. Erin, this is what the judges had to say about the Bedura effect. The attitudes, faith and identity of a young social worker are transformed by his relationship with an elderly, housebound Aboriginal woman. Her tragic story is compelling and confronting. This is skillful and high impact writing. Congratulations, Erin George. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm shaking, so just let me. Thank you for the very great honour of awarding me um, this place at the Sparkly Young Australian Christian Writers Award. Thank you to Isabel for suggesting that I enter in the first place, for mentoring me um, and for flying me down tonight so that I could be here. You live such a big, bold life and you inspire those around you um, to be brave and to live lives that are worth writing about. Thank you to Lauren um, for teaching me the art of Bible storytelling um, and to Miriam, winner of last year's award, uh, for your kindness in using words to build others up, to celebrate our shared humanity and the hope that we have in Christ. It is the word who took on flesh, who came down to walk with us, that I live and write for. It is only through reading his story that I know he created us for himself and crowns humanity with such glory that we dare come before the throne of the Father through the blood of the Son and in the power of his Spirit. He's made us for ourselves and our souls are restless until we realise more than this broken existence has to offer. I don't know you all here tonight, um, but I know that I can be tempted uh, to be proud of the freedom in our great nation. It feels free to me. I can worship freely here without fear of persecution and I'm free to pursue the life that I want. It's easy to say that the walls are being built out there, that out there hatred and terrorism have won. But I wrote this piece because that's simply not true. And in our own backyard, our first people stand as second-rate citizens. The gap between black and white in Australia feels as wide as it has ever been. The cycles of poverty our First Peoples are locked into are more than educational or financial. They're relational. I work with families who are still reeling from the effects of the stolen generation. I wrote this piece about a grandmother whose children were stolen from her arms, whose grandchildren are in care. And in reality, these children are being chased down the back streets of Redfern in Sydney, in Melbourne CBD. They grow up in a very different Australia to the one that I'm so proud of. Martin Luther King Jr. said, our lives begin to end the day we are silent about things that matter. It's for freedom that Christ has set us free. So let us stand firm in this freedom and ride out against the yoke of slavery our nation has placed on its first peoples. We do not submit and we will not stand silently by. So thank you to Michael Colley, to those at Sparklit who know that where the gospel is preached, we need words, we need books. We need words to cry out because we follow the word, the way, the truth, and the life. And he is our only hope. And tonight, to present Erin with the award is the wonderful Coralie Buchanan, who won this very award 10 years ago. So she's celebrating a milestone as well. Thank you so much, Coralie. Round of applause.